Okay, so I am massively confused because the game hasn't quite updated yet, but there it is. Nidus Prime with the Strun Prime, the Magnus Prime, the Prime Access is there. I do wish that they would change this so you can take, I mean, if you say it hovers over and you can see what they are, just click on the Prime Accessories and be able to see a better picture of them. We do have images that allow us to take a better look at the Prime Accessories that is the Prime Sandana and the Necromex suit. The only way to get these, sadly, is to buy Prime Access. These images, of course, are on the update page because as I was recording this, it literally <laughs> launched the update, which, well, has brought Nidus Prime, the Strun Prime, the Magnus Prime, we'll go and compare them in a second, with the 90 day boosters that only if you buy the Prime accessories but more importantly, it has brought back the Plague Star event, which we will get into in a moment. Oh, I'm looking forward to the return of this so much simply because it also brings for the first time for the Plague Star a new weapon. The Ghoul Saw. Even though the game itself says this update went live 33 minutes ago, which to be fair is still, oh, I would say 40, ooh, really, 50 minutes earlier than it usually goes live, because it usually goes live at 2 p.m. ET, but this is because we have the Plague Star event in with this. But, honestly, the Plague Star event is playing a huge side role here, because if we go to Warframes and go down to the bottom, because that's where frames you have, who you haven't leveled yet will be and there he is Nidus Prime looking quite amazing again missing the option to be able to turn him into his other form here because there's just the one form kind of hoping as it goes around the his other side is in his other form but no such luck meaning that his armor and was it is it the energy that's gone up the energy's gone up by 25, the armor's gone up by 15, and it looks like the health has gone up by 25 as well. No sprint speed, just that. That is what a lot of primes have anyway. Increases to armor, energy, health, sometimes shields, but uh, yeah. This is Nidus we're referring to here, and Nidus doesn't have any shields. But you can see his original one is in his other form, whereas the Prime version, like most Primes, is in this one room standing there turning around. That means Nidus also has four relics. The Axie A14 with the blueprint as the uncommon, the Lith N7 with the chassis as the rare, the Meso B5, with the systems as the common, and the Neo N16 with the systems as the common. And so the Neuroptics as the rare, but also, no, that's, that's Neja. <laughs> I saw the N. It's the Neuroptics, and it's the rare. As for the Strun Prime, let's be honest, what do you compare this to? The Mark 1 is kind of entry level, not that amazing. The Strun is a huge increase over that. The Strun Wraith is a better increase yet again that has 400 damage and then there is the strun prime 528 total damage nice amount of crit building this for crit is going to probably be the way to go since status is 6.7 percent but 12 multi-shot yep just like all shotguns building this thing for multi-shot is going to be a must as you could expect, there are new relics. The Axie I2 relic holds the Strun Prime Receiver as the common part. The Lith T7 holding the Barrel as the uncommon. The Meso S10 with the Blueprint as the Neo N17 with the stock as the uncommon. All of these, well, to find them, you literally just have to go in, search for what you're looking for. You don't have to add Prime, go to the relic, and you can see these things drop from everywhere absolutely and by far my favorite thing of all of this is yes the magnus is okay it has 76 total damage this has the same but the crit chance and the status have gone from 22 to 28 magazine is still it and uh, nothing else really is 
looking that amazing about it, it has... Oh, that is a huge shame. Fire rate is still 5.8. It's the same. They've just increased the crit chance and the status chance. The reload is slightly quicker, though. More importantly, with this thing coming around, it means, hopefully, they've done it before, we will finally have the option to do something I would love to have right now. And that would be a dual-wielding version of it. Same damage, same crit, same everything else. It does take longer to reload. So imagine this with a longer reload. Should be an interesting secondary. And as expected, the Magnus only has three. The Axie M2 Relic with the barrel as the ray. There is probably going to be a grip or something. The Blueprint is the common on the Meso B6. And the Neo T5 holds the receiver. So it's the receiver and the barrel, that is it. There is no stock, there's just the three, because when searching for Magnus, only three relics actually turn up. It will have launched by the time this video has gone live, but at the time of recording, it states at the top that it will go live at 2 p.m., bringing all of the goodness with it. There is a new melee stance that goes with it, but Revenant does have a new deluxe skin, and in all honesty, that has to be an amazing skin, Otherwise, well, it just has to be an amazing skin. It does come with a collection. What does it come with? The sword. It is a two-handed Nakana skin, and look at it. It is... The skin itself does look pretty nice. The only way to get the Nakana skin is to buy the collection, though, which basically means it's going to cost 45 just for that, but only if you want the skin to go with it, because the Revenant skin... Ooh, the Revenant is a good-looking frame to begin with. This, I'm just looking at that weapon and thinking that looks absolutely amazing. It's, the image itself looks very weird here, but then when you actually see it on the two-handed Nakana, oh yes, I can see that on... That fixes the biggest problem I have with a certain two-handed Nakana, because I will just put that skin on it. This also brings changes to Ureli that basically increases the speed and range of pretty much all of her abilities. The stat changes, they've made some stat changes to her abilities as well, but it doesn't really say what they've made to her normal stats. If you look through there, nothing. They have increased the radius of Riptide by 25%, the Aqua Blades, 25% range, 50% increase in damage sea snares now move quicker Ureli is going to be or is now a much much better frame if we go to actual abilities uh yeah that's an insane amount of damage the duration is still pretty nice but there's no range to it you will notice that because you can't really adjust the range of it that you can hence it has a range and radius but 15 that is more than enough. That is now so much... No, let's keep the base stats on there. Stronger than it was before, and the fact that the sea snares now move so much quicker makes everything so much better. But the big changes for her come with the... the K-Drive, because I'm... I butchered that once, and I'm not doing it again. As it's about to turn night, we're just going to come out here and cast her K-Drive, because now there are rolls. Wow, okay. Wow, okay. <laughs> yeah, um, did not see that coming. Don't know why I tried to do that. The, that roll, that is going to make things so much easier. Goodbye, nice clear skies. Goodbye. The new purple thing not over there. Also, I should have shot a standard one of those because it moves quicker. To do these missions, you have to go and see Konzu because Konzu has the missions for Plague Star. And, oh no, don't click on that. Ah, oh, I can't get out of this now until he's finished talking. Anyway, go to bounties and it appears here, right there. There is not a lot of standing for them doing this, but it is worth doing because... There's a lot of good stuff inside of them, and it literally looks like just relics. But the Gladiator mods drop, 
Cetus Wisps drop, Vigilant Mods drop, Lenses drop apparently, looking at the reward list. There's a lot of rewards from this, and the big one is actually worse than you may think because I came across something horrible in the marketplace. But go here and Operation Supply, and it's in this that this is what people have been waiting for. You can buy pre built former for 3,000 standing each. But now there's another weapon. The Ghoul Saw has now been added to Warframe. It uh, does only need the four parts to build it at 4,000 standing each part, meaning you will need the 4,000 there, another four, that's another four, another four, and another four. Yeah, by the time you get to this point, I'm pretty much done. Uh, I can't buy all the parts to build this thing, that's horrible. But the stance for it is also here, Butcher's Revelry, that allows you to do some amazing things with this that I wish they would just allow it to demonstrate in this little animation here, because you can ride this thing on the floor as part of the stance, meaning you will need that to go with it. Oh, you are an ex Vince, that's like 23,000? Wow, that is expensive for standing. But, yeah, you have a lot of space. This is why when this event is on, it's always good to have a lot of standing left over. It makes me wish I did more last year. Yeah. But there is other ways to get a hold of the ghoul saw. Yeah, you can buy it from the marketplace. And yes, just going to the marketplace, it stands out like a sore thumb, you would have seen it earlier. I do not understand why there are two packs here. Oh, the... what? You have to pay Platinum for the... for the stance? But as it said, Corrupted Hollow Key changes, the sister will drop. As sad as this is to say, one Corrupted Hollow Key per squad member in the final mission when you take her out. Meaning if you do it with a squad of four, you are guaranteed four Corrupted Hollow Keys at the end of the showdown mission. If you are farming them like you probably should be from the real Jack missions, it is now going to drop 10 from the Veil vale Proxima. Those extermination missions, or skirmishes, or, well, the skirmish can sometimes be quicker than the extermination mission, but the extermination mission tends to be uh, just a little bit better. Though, love to see survival on there. Ten of them instead of six. So instead of getting six and having to do many missions, because they're not a guaranteed drop anyway, because it doesn't say that they have increased the drop chance, they have increased the drop amount. Meaning on the veil, you will now get ten instead of six meaning that the rest have been increased by one. Hollow keys, of course, used to buy these. That would be the Tenet melee weapons. The only way to get a hold of the Tenet melee weapons is to get a hold of at least 40 of these things, the corrupted hollow keys, to buy one weapon. Just one. And I love the fact they've added mission. Mis I know you said mishing. Missing requirements that tell you you still need to continue farming them. These, of course, haven't changed since Monday. Not that I actually did this or included that in the weekly reset. So none of these are actually any good of a roll on them, apart from maybe that, which is 40% if you want one with toxin on it. The rest of them are hovering in the 20s. But having them in... Ooh, actually, 43. That's not bad. Which means two. Uh, nope, it's going to be three from Earth and Saturn... Four from Venus, five from Neptune, six from Pluto, and ten from the Veil. Oh yes, that needed to be a thing two months ago. But it, any mission in the Veil, the skirmish, well, it's both ex, both skirmish, the extermination missions makes no difference. They are just as quick as each other. But if you are lucky enough, and I have had four drop in a row before doing extermination missions. You can get four dropping in a row, and that's basically a guaranteed tenet weapon. Because those things are a pain to farm for. And now, ten at a time.
It is weird, but I was reading through the PlayStation one that had a couple fixes specifically for it, but the changes to the corrupted hollow keys and Urelli, I'm already hearing people say this is already too late, but it's not. A lot of people are still getting Urelli who are just using Urelli and are still farming corrupted hollow keys. It's only those, and I mentioned it before, I will mention it again, when Sisters of Porvos launched, they did say there's a lot to do in this update. There is no need to farm through it in a week and be done with it. A lot of people did that. <laughs> Quite a lot of people. It's those people who are complaining that these changes are too late. They're not too late if you are still farming corrupted hollow keys. Or if you are trying to, well, even if you did it in a rush beforehand, you still want to get a better weapon having... The hollow key form easier is obviously a good thing but reading through this and changes to so many things it is way too much to go into everything looks absolutely amazing so far from what i have seen so i think we'll leave this off here for now thanks for watching and i'll catch you next time <laughs>